The Digitac can sequence up to eight independent tracks of sampled audio, but it can also send independent MIDI sequences to other MIDI controllable devices. The eight MIDI tracks on Digitac can all be assigned to their own independent MIDI channel, and each MIDI track can send note on and off messages, program change messages, as well as dedicated control for pitch bend, aftertouch, mod wheel, and breath control, MIDI CC, and an LFO to interact with the parameters of the MIDI tracks. I'm going to show you how to use these MIDI functions with the Roland JU06A for sounds and the Crittering Atari ETC video synth for visuals. The first thing to do is make sure your MIDI cables are connected and that the MIDI settings on the Digitact and your devices are configured properly. I have a MIDI cable connected to the MIDI out of the Digitact into the input of a MIDI splitter. From the splitter, I'm going MIDI in into the JU06A and the ETC. Now we want to configure a few things on the Digitact. Select the gear icon and navigate down to MIDI config, sync, and select what MIDI messages you want sent out of the Digitact. So I want to send clock, and I also want to send program change messages so I can change the scenes on the ETC video synth. Next, select port config, and by default, when you start a new project, you are already set to output MIDI and USB, and that's fine for this example. Also by default, parameter output will be set to CC, which indicates that the Digitac knobs are sending control messages to our external devices. Next, let's make sure our external devices are set up to the MIDI channels we want to control from the Digitac. For this example, I want to use channels 15 and 16 for the JU06A and the ETC video synth respectively. To change the MIDI channel on your external device, make sure to consult that device's manual. The JU06A is on MIDI channels 15, and the ETC is on MIDI channel 16. So I want MIDI track A on the Digitact to control my JU06A, and I want MIDI track H to control my ETC video synth. So I'll select MIDI track A by pressing Trig 9. Then I go to the source page, and by default, every value here will be X'd out. So I'll hold Function and press Encoder A to change the MIDI channel and select MIDI channel 15 for the JU06A. And let's do the same for our ETC video synth. I'm going to select MIDI track H, hold Function, press down on Encoder A, and rotate until we get to MIDI channel 16. Also on this page, we can set up our program changes for the ETC. Hold down Function and press in on encoder D. And now I can scroll through my scenes on the ETC video synth. There are two ways I use to enter MIDI notes on the sequencer. You can either select the note you want on the trig page by selecting a single note with encoder A, Then use encoders B through D to select up to four notes of polyphony. Or you can hold function and select track to turn the 16 steps into a single octave keyboard and play notes in live either quantized or unquantized. In the Trig Parameters page, I can control the probability of each step in the sequence being triggered. Now I want to assign the encoders on the Digitac to some of the functions on the JU06A. I recommend consulting your owner's manual again, which should list the CC values that correspond to the function you want to control on your external device. Once you have those values, head over to the CC Select page by pressing AMP. Then just rotate the knobs to the corresponding CC value. 
I have already gone ahead and assigned the parameters of the JU06A that I want to control. The top row is my envelope with attack, decay, sustain, and release, and below that are filter frequency cutoff, resonance, envelope level, and sublevel. Now let's go to the CC value page by selecting filter. By default, all of these values are going to be X'd out. You must unlock them the same way. Hold function and press in on the encoder you want to operate. So now I have control over GU06A's defined parameter settings within Digitact. So let's add some life to this baseline by parameter locking a few steps. Hold down on a trig and then rotate to taste. We can also parameter lock program changes, and I will show you that on the ETC. I'm going to place a trig on step 1 for both pages, but each trig will have its own scene from the ETC. Each MIDI track can be controlled by its own independent LFO. The LFO is generating a wave shape that is used to control the parameters that we've assigned to our external devices. I want the LFO to control the release of the JU06A, which is what I assigned to CC value 4. And then let's do the same thing for the ETC video synth. The LFO's destination is set to control one of the parameters on the ETC. Wow, that's pretty cool. So now we have movement with our baseline and our visuals, and all of it's being controlled directly from the Digitact. There's a lot more you can do when using the eight MIDI tracks, and even more depth with all the functions described in this video, but hopefully this should get you started. And if you'd like to see any more of this explained in more detail, or you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy jamming on your hardware.